So I want to show you a ridiculous tool that I've made that helps illustrate what Azure Cognitive Services can do with computer vision and text analytics. So I have a dog who is a wonderful little Cairn Terrier named Jester. Now, this is not him. This is a stuffed animal uh, that I got at a, a uh, local conference. But I thought a while ago that, hey, what my dog does is he looks out the window and he looks to see if there's any animals or people walking around uh, that are out there. And if he sees any, he will bark and let me know what he sees. He also was able to listen to some basic commands. And if he feels like it, he's able to respond to them. Well, it turns out that Azure Cognitive Services can do all of this and more through computer vision and text analytics. So I'm going to show you a tool I call Dog OS or Doggos uh, that helps illustrate the things that Azure Cognitive Services can do. So let's check it out. Welcome to Doggos. So here I am in Dog OS or Doggos, and this is using Azure Cognitive Services to communicate with me. You heard that the application talked to me when it started off. It said, welcome to Dog OS. Uh, and that used Azure's uh, text-to-speech or speech synthesis capabilities to speak to me. Now, in order to make any of this work, you have to have some things set up. So when you're in your Azure portal and you, you look at your cognitive services resource, you have a keys and endpoint blade that has a couple of keys that you can use to cycle through for security purposes. You have an Azure region and you have an endpoint. Now, these three things are needed in the application or well, anytime you're working with Azure Cognitive Services. But once you have them in there, the application is able to make API calls out to Azure and generate you know, speech and image insights and things like that. Your settings have been saved. So let's take a look at the text analytics and language understanding APIs. So with text analytics, we give Azure a sentence. So for example, I might say, do you want to go on a walk to Paris, France? Why, yes, Jester does want to go on a walk. And it was able to, to analyze that and get out some basic information of it. Now, I'm printing this out in this lovely little control that Telerik uh, WPF controls have provided for me. But this is all the information I was able to get back from the API. It tells me what language it thinks I'm using. It identifies some key phrases such as walk, Paris, and France. Uh, even detected a couple entities. It says, hey, there's some locations here, uh, a location called Paris and a location called France. And you'll notice that there are some confidence intervals in you know, it, its, its understanding. It also thinks that Paris is a linked entity uh, and it has, hey, it has a URL for it. That's a Wikipedia page for Paris, France. Sentiment analysis says, hey, is this going to be a positive, negative, or neutral uh, kind of thing? It says, well, it, there's a 1% chance this is positive. This is way more, more likely to be a, a uh, neutral statement. And that's what text analysis can do. It can make uh, sense of text. It can analyze it and find entities in there. There's also something called language understanding, or Lewis, or Luis, I've heard it pronounced as well, that lets you map a piece of text uh, or a sentence that the user might utter to a supported intent. You know, think about an intent as a command the application can, can run. Now, my application only has three intents. One is walk, one is good boy, and one is none. Uh, so <laughs> very limited kind of thing. It says, hey, I'm pretty sure you're talking about the walk intent. Okay, uh, But there's a 2% chance you meant this one and a half a percent chance it meant no, the none intent. And based on what intent was mapped back, my application just responds back. Now, again, it uses text-to-speech to convert any sort of a string to an audio file that's then played out for the user. Okay? Uh, but there's also speech-to-text, so I can talk to the application. Are you a good boy? Jester is a good doggo. And so you see, it was able to understand what I was saying. It says, hey, are you a good boy? And it listened to that, and it was able to send that text off. And we see this time around, it... Uh, match the good boy intent with a 94% chance. And we also see that the the, the uh, sentiment was much more on the good side. It's still largely neutral, but it's closer to being on the good side. All right, so that's the text analysis and language understanding capabilities. Now, I should note that language understanding is largely being replaced by something called conversational language understanding or CLU. Uh, they both have roughly equivalent uh, capabilities. This application, I haven't updated it yet to use the newer Clue, so it's on the older language understanding, but they're both roughly equivalent. Now, the Vision APIs are pretty cool. So here, I can start my webcam. 
hello Matt, hello green screen, and I can choose to take a snapshot. Nothing to bark at, but here's some things I saw, indoor, person, wall, computer, human face. Okay, so I took an image from the webcam and I actually saved that to a disk file and then I uploaded it to Azure and Azure did a number of things for me. It generated a smart thumbnail for it. So see how the full image is a little wider. It said, hey, this is the most interesting area of your image. I'm going to crop to it. Okay. Um, it was able to detect if there was any adult gore or racy content in there. Uh, thank God it looks like I'm safe. Um, it was also able to find the dominant colors. It says, hey, there's a lot of green, gray, and black. So green, gray, black, that makes sense. Um, it's able to identify some tags. So, hey, it thinks this is an indoor scene. There's a person here, hi, wall. There'd be my basement walls here, human face, uh, clothing, man, computer, and glasses. So that's pretty cool. Uh, categories, there's about, what, 58 or so categories that can be in an Azure uh, image. So this gives me kind of a taxonomy of what's in my image. I haven't found categories to be incredibly useful, um, but this a person wearing glasses, that's a computer image description of this. Uh, this is one of the weaker ones. I've seen some really good ones. That's not the best one, but it is accurate. Um, but this one here, object detection. So when you give it an, an image, it's able to look at the image and detect objects. And when it looked at this image of me, it said, hey, there's a bounding box around the person and also another bounding box around the glasses. And it gives me rectangles for those things with names there. And so very, very tiny, but that does say person and that does say sunglasses in this case. So we see these little bounding boxes there. Now, uh, and the last thing here we see is nothing to bark at, but here's some things I see I saw in the image. I'm just listing off some of the things that were in that image. But let's make our image a little bit more fun. Okay, a little stuffed dog and one of my dog's toys. And we're going to take another snapshot here. And we're going to see what it does. I saw a toy. Bark, bark, bark. So we see it was able to find a couple more objects in that particular image. And I had my application logic uh, coded so that if it sees anything resembling, let's say, a rabbit or a plush or a stuffed toy, uh, it would say, hey, I saw a toy or I saw a blank bark, 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 bark. So very ridiculous application, but this hopefully gives you a taste of what we can do with Azure Cognitive Services. With computer vision, we can make sense of any image. Uh, with you know, text analytics and language understanding or conversational language understanding, we're able to make a lot more sense of chat and, and just raw text. It doesn't have to be a sentence. It could be an entire chapter of a book or something larger. So there's some really incredible things we can do with this. Uh, we can get a lot more insights from our applications and you can take these capabilities in Azure Cognitive Services and just really expand an existing application with more and more functionality. Now, this video doesn't cover code as we were seeing here, but if you go out to accessibleai.com, you're going to find my, uh, sorry, that's accessibleai.dev. You're going to find a lot more um, things from me. So if we go over here, I have a whole bunch of stuff around, let's see, Azure Cognitive Services. I've got code and tips around most things in Azure Cognitive Services. So check that out. I'll have the link to this in the description as well. And uh, happy coding. I hope you enjoy whatever you're building and uh, <laughs> have fun automating your dog or whatever else you're gonna do with this stuff.